Hi there, Mr. Luke here. Welcome to the Bertrand School of Music Instrument Fundamentals series. The goal of this program is to give you a reference point when you're not in front of your teachers and you just need a little bit of a refresher uh, on how to take care of the instrument. These instruments are not toys and require great care when you're handling them. In this series, we will be covering instrument assembly, making your first sound, and how to clean the instrument when you're all done. Please enjoy the series. And now, the instrument fundamentals for saxophone. So before we begin putting the instrument together, let's talk a little bit about how we should be taking it out of the case. So if you'll notice, I have my instrument here on a flat surface. You never want to open it up in your lap or anything because once you open it, pieces can fall out. So I have it on a steady, flat surface. And for which side you want to put down on the table, you'll see that my handle here is attached to the bottom part of the case. So I always want the handle to be towards the table. So once that's there, you can just undo the latches. And now that we have the case open, let's just talk about some of the parts of the saxophone. So here we have our mouthpiece kit, or assembly. We have what's called the neck. We have the actual body of the saxophone. And then we have our neck strap right here. So now let's go ahead and start putting the instrument together. Let's go ahead and attach the main body to the neck now. So to get the main body out of the case, go ahead and grasp it by the bell. And the reason that we take it out by the bell is just because of the keys around the main body. They're made out of a softer metal, so if you really squeeze them or kind of twist them in any other way than they're supposed to, they will go out of alignment and they'll need to come in for a repair. So in the main body, you should have your cap here at the top. Go ahead and remove that so we can put in the neck. And then the neck, the side without the cork is just going to go ahead and slide into this top portion right here. And you want to slide it so that the cork is facing away from the bell. So it's not going to be like this. It's going to be lined up opposite. And you can just gently twist so it goes in there. And then you'll see we have two screws on the front, or possibly two. Some saxophones only have one. But this one over here you'll see is just for a liar, so that's not going to tighten the neck at all. This one over here is actually going to tighten the neck into place so when we're playing it isn't swipping and slopping around. So um, what you can do is just take this screw and then this one right here and we're just going to tighten that into place. So it doesn't need to be super tight, just make sure that it's in enough so that the neck is not going to slide around while you're playing. Alright, so now that we have the neck on, we'll go ahead and talk about putting the mouthpiece and the reed together. So now we're going to go ahead and make our first sound on the saxophone. And to do this, we're just going to need a couple of things. So first, we're just going to use the neck of the saxophone. So I'm going to go ahead and take my neck back off. I'm just going to go ahead and put it down on the table. I just put my saxophone back into the case for right now. Now, the other things that we're going to need for this is our reed with our reed guard. Now, it's very important that you have a reed guard because if you take a look at your reed, which is this bamboo piece right here, if you take a look at the tip, it's, it's very, very thin. It's actually thinner than paper. So if you don't use a reed guard, which is included in the care kit, if you don't have the care kit, it's, you must, you must, must, must get it. Uh, you can either get it here in the store or you can get it online, but it has everything you need to take care of the instrument, so make sure you have, you have that kit. And what you do once you're done playing, you're actually going to store the reed back inside this so it keeps the tip from getting chipped or cracked. Because if your reed gets chipped or cracked in any way, it's pretty much useless. It won't vibrate the right way, so you can pretty much just throw it out. So we're going to take that with our reed guard. 
This is our cork grease right here. Kind of looks like a tube of chapstick, but definitely don't use this as chapstick. It's not the same thing. Okay, this is going to go on our cork. And then this is just our instrument or our mouthpiece assembly right here. So, first things first, we're going to go ahead and take off the cap from our cork grease. And then this is the cork here on the neck. So it's the side that didn't go into the saxophone. So what you can do is just take some, and you're actually just going to rub it right on there, onto the cork. Once you get a little bit on there, you can actually just work it in with your fingers just a little bit. Just make sure to wash your hands off once you're all done. Okay. So now go ahead and take your reed. And what we're going to do is it has to be moist in order for it to vibrate correctly. So what you're going to do is just actually stick it, the thinner side, into your mouth. And you're just going to get it moist in there. You want to probably leave it in there for about 10 to 20 seconds. Mine's already pretty moist right now, so I'm just going to put it back in my reed guard for when I'm ready to use it. Now if you take a look at your mouthpiece assembly, there's this black cap on top, which is just the mouthpiece cap, and you're going to just remove that. That just holds this metal part down, which is called the ligature. So it comes completely off, and it's only going to go on one way. Notice if I try to stick it on and it doesn't slide down at all, it's on upside down. So I'm just going to go ahead and reverse it, and when you're looking at the mouthpiece cap, it should be facing, or you're looking at the mouthpiece and the ligature, these screws here should be facing towards the right. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and remove my ligature for a second. And I'm just going to go ahead and gently twist on the mouthpiece to the neck. Now you don't need to twist it all the way on. What you're going to do is just leave a little bit of the cork showing here. Okay? And it should be pretty much so that the reed, once it's holding down like this, the reed should be pointing down once it's on. So if you have it sideways or anything like this, just make sure that that opening in the mouthpiece is facing towards the ground when you're holding it. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and slide the ligature on the only way it can fit. So remember those screws should be facing towards the right when you're looking at it. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take the thicker side of the reed and we're actually going to slide it in between the ligature and the mouthpiece. It doesn't go inside the hole or anything like this. It's going to lie a flat against the mouthpiece. So go ahead. Some people will stick it in underneath like this, but I like to protect the tip as much as I possibly can. So what we're going to do is go ahead and slide it down with a thicker part leading first. And you're just going to go ahead and slide it down until it's about even with the black part of the mouthpiece. Now once it's in that position, you can go ahead and slide the ligature down. And the ligature should start to get a little bit tight. Now what you're going to do from there is we need to tighten the screws so that the reed is going to stay in the right position while we're playing. So you can go ahead and tighten the screws. And you don't need to crank them down so they're really tight. What you're going to do is just make sure that it's on there with just enough pressure so that it won't fall off while you're playing. Okay, so now we're going to talk about our embouchure, or the position that our lips need to be in when we're playing the saxophone. So what I want you to do is take your bottom lip, and you're going to go ahead and just cover it with your, cover your bottom teeth with your bottom lip, just like this. Okay, so it doesn't need to be so far in, it's just going to be there to provide some padding for the reed. Okay, and then the top of your, your, your top teeth are actually going to bite down onto the top of the mouthpiece. So if you can take your thumb, it should look just like this. Okay? So I have my bottom lip curled over, and I'm biting down onto the top of the mouthpiece. Just like that. Now from here, I'm going to draw my lips tight around it like a drawstring. Just like that. Now from there, we're just going to take a deep breath, and we're going to blow air in between the reed and the mouthpiece. And the reed is actually what's vibrating there, and that's what needs to happen in order for it to sound correct. So if you're getting that sound, that's exactly what we want it to sound like. Now, you could be having some problems making that sound. If you're biting down too hard on the reed, then it's not going to be vibrating at all. So if you bite down too hard, no air is going to go through in between the reed and the mouthpiece. So Try not to bite down quite so hard and the sound should come right out. 
Now, the opposite is true as well. If you're not biting down hard enough, it's just going to not vibrate at all. So you need to make sure that you have just the right pressure. So if you're not getting the sound, try experimenting just biting down a little bit harder and a little bit less and the sound should come out. Now if you have too much of the mouthpiece in, you can get a really high squeaky sound. and It sounds terrible, so you should know if you're doing it wrong. So I'm going to put in way too much of the reed into my mouth and I'm going to just blow and it should make a terrible sound. Okay, we don't want that sound at all. So remember, bottom lip is covering the teeth, your top lip or your top teeth are biting down, draw everything tight like a drawstring, and that sound should come right out. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and put the neck back onto the saxophone and hear what a saxophone should really sound like.